Afternoon Theatre presents a play specially written for Quadrophony by Jesse W. Brook. But you can still listen in stereo and mono as usual. Listen, and I will tell the tale of the knight, the witch, and the dragon. Listen, and you will hear a story of the past, the past of the imagination, where all things are possible. Listen, and you will hear of power, and love, and sacrifice, and of when the last fingers of myth and legend, sorcery and magic, trailed across the earth before the world was certain. Listen, a tournament is taking place. Steady there. Steady, steady. My lance, Ian. Sir Knight. Steady, steady. May God go with you, Sir Hugh. May I hit him clean and fair. Sir Edmund, are you ready? I am ready. Sir Hugh, are you ready? I am ready. Ready. Then my lord the king bids you fight. Fight fair and well. And may victory go to the strongest and most skilled. My lady Edith will give the word. I did it. He swept him from his charger like a fly. Uh, and then your sword. Uh, his helmet was dented, all out of shape. Ian. When you struck, I thought you would cut his head off, but no. <laughs> Stop in the throat. Had him help. Ian, my armor. It needs removing. Oh, uh, yes, Sir Knight. Of course. Uh, it was such a noble sight, Sir Knight. You were magnificent. Magnificent. No, I did my business better than he, that is all. All? Oh. They say he has a broken rib. Oh, do they? Oh, but he will heal and grow strong while I get fat and weak. Time marches with him, not me. Oh, hurry with this breastplate, Ian. My belly longs to sag. I am very proud to be your squire, Sir Knight. Well, make the most of it while you may. Sir Knight? I aim to retire. Retire? But why? I cannot understand it. Wait until you reach my age. Wait until you start feeling tired. The breastplate. Oh, oh, yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's better. Now, bring me wine. Sir Knight. When I stood there, Sir Edmund at my mercy, the world at my feet, I knew in my heart I would have to retire. Follow other dreams. Dreams I've put aside for too long. Even so, Sir Knight, I... Here, yeah, I have been fighting and jousting for 20 years. This afternoon, I gained my ambition in that direction. Champion Knight. Oh, I will revel in it for a few months. The winter, perhaps. But when the spring comes and Sir Edmund and his like start sniffing at my heels... Nope. Better I go in my own time, with good grace. There is nothing more pitiful than an old man not accepting it past his prime. Dreams. Ah, dreams. 
How old are you, lad? Seventeen, Sir Knight. And what do you dream of? Oh, lots of things, Sir Knight. Knighthood, glory, riches. Yes, indeed, sir. Women. In what way, sir? In what way? I warrant you see women the same as I did at your age. In terms of beauty, objects to be worshipped from afar. But I no longer look for that. All I wish for now is a comfortable matron with ample curves, child-bearing curves, a woman who will give me peace and offspring. And if she have some hides of land, I'll not complain. And to tell you true, the land will be the first thing I would inquire about. I... I think the Princess Edith is very beautiful, Sir Knight. Huh? Very beautiful. I was watching her this afternoon and... Aha! But like me, you were over 30 paces away. How could you tell her beauty? It was obvious, Sir Knight. Obvious, eh? Hmm, bit of a shrew, if you ask me. A shrew? Bad features, all scrunched up together. Shows a spiteful nature. Sir Knight. I pity the man she marries. Cross-eyed, too, I shouldn't wonder. Sir Knight, her loveliness was so apparent that... that... you should know when I jest. Jest? Yes? Of course. More people this afternoon were watching her than me. You don't have romantic thoughts of the princess, do you? No. No, I just thought... It was an observation only. An observation only. You observe all you want, Ian, but remember, she is out of reach for you, completely unobtainable. But... Never let your ambition truly fly that high. Never. Jane! Jane! My lady. Oh, what are you doing? Turning your bed, my lady. Oh, Jane, turning beds. Needed turning, my lady. But today, with the grand tourney just over and a feast tonight, how can you think to turn a bed? I thought it looked a little damp, my lady. Oh, Jane, you are so beautifully down to earth. Perhaps it's just as well my head is in the sky and my heart is pounding. I can feel it. Tonight, I must look my best. Oh, dear. My very best. My blue dress, I think, the one cut low, and my gold chain around my waist and slippers. Yellow slippers. My lady. Yes. My lady, who is it this time? Hmm. Keep a secret. Well, I always have done, my lady. His name is Ian. Ian? The squire of Sir Hugh. The squire. Why, you're not even a knight. He kept looking at me all afternoon. I swear his eyes are blue. My lady, you did not look at him. Oh, no. Well, out of the corner of my eye. Otherwise, I was terribly distant and aloof. I should hope so. I should think he hardly thought I noticed him. But I did. My lady. Oh, do not worry. Nothing will come of it. He is too far beneath me. Oh, but one day, Jane, one day soon before I marry... I will have an adventure. Mm. I have everything, Jane, including boredom. Do not begrudge me a little excitement. Mm, well, no harm will come of it, I suppose. You have been in love before and fallen out just as quick. Not with Ian. Ian, I will love forever. And each of the others you swore you would love forever. Oh, did I? Ah, oh, but that is the beauty of love. You always think it will last forever. I know. Even when you know in your heart it is only pretense. I wish I had some companions, Jane. Someone of my own age, my own rank. I wish that too, but... Oh, I will go and prepare your clothes for this evening. The blue dress, Jane? The blue dress, my lady. And the yellow slipper. <laughs> Tonight I shall dance. Dance with my father's aging courtiers. And they will tread on my dress and catch the hem. But I will not mind... Because tonight, in my imagination, I will be dancing with Ian. A cozy world at peace, where war is make-believe and people know their place. A set, defined, established land of order and tranquility, where evil only lies in the past. But listen. That past approaches fast.
hear you have a broken rib, Sir Edmund. Bruised, badly bruised, not broken. Oh, I am glad of that. And I'll be after you again next year, Sir You Never fear. I oh, hello. It's not like the old days. You are young, you would not know. Then no knight could say with certainty he will be here next year. Uh, you talk of the dragon. And the witch. Haven. Even now that name sends a chill up my spine. You fought her? Aye. Oh, the dragon, rather. That is where her power lay. And I have the scars to prove it. Now, there's more valor when the foe is real. More death, too. Uh, even so. Oh, even so nothing. When I rode forth against the dragon 15 years ago, I was one of 50 knights. It took Strahl 20 seconds to wipe us out. 20 seconds! They left me for dead. We were like ants against a lizard. A lizard who spat fire. Maybe, but we beat them in the end. Aye, we beat them in the end. Oh, there's my squire. Ian! Ian! Bring us more wine. I warrant he's been partaking too. He looked a trifle fuddled. Well, pour it, fellas. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Oh, sorry, sir. Not on the table, Ian. Sorry, sir. What are you looking at, squire? I'm trying to see if she has arrived. She? She has taken a fancy to the Princess Edith. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. She is she's too beautiful to describe. She is like the sun. Ooh, like the sun. I have composed a, a lay for her. Would you like to hear it? He's seen her once from 30 yards. <laughs> her nose, like porcelain, beams forth from between her shining eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it needs some polishing. One hand now. A poem, sir. Oh. I've not composed much. You have poured our wine, Ian. You may depart. No, oh, no, let him stay. I, I want to hear more. His foolishness reflects on me. Ian, leave us. Yes, sir, knight. And yes. Tell your poem to none else. Uh, no, sir, knight. I'll keep the wine away from him in future. Our nose gleams forth. <laughs> <laughs> He should have happened to him. What happened to me when I was... It was a long time ago. A red-haired woman in a tavern. She ripped my back open. Claws like a cat. I lost my virginity, my innocence, and my romantic notions of women in the space of one night. I, I never even found her name. Nor have I ever seen her since. Ah, uh, going to a convent, I expect. A last fling before the doors closed. Aye. <laughs> Aye, that would explain it. Oh, Trinka! There's talk on other things. This harping on the past makes me feel my age. There. How do I look? You look lovely, my lady. Yes. Yes. I think I do. Oh, my father sends for me. Enter. My lady, the king. Father. Edith. My lord. Sire. You may leave us, if you please, madam. Sire. Father, why have you come to me? I was only now preparing to... I have something to tell you. It is not easy. Yes, father. I, uh, <clears throat> I am an austere man. I have sacrificed emotion because I must rule. And that requires cold logic. I love you, child. You are very precious to me. I know that, Father. You are my only child. The stability of the country after I'm gone will depend upon you at... And that is not a burden to be carried lightly or alone. I have arranged your marriage. Yes, Father. Yes. <clears throat> he uh, is of blood royal, the Duke of Senath. Senath. He w will be here in three days. 
The wedding will be announced then and will take place in three weeks' time. You, you will please prepare yourself. Yes, Father. Well, I have told you now, Edith, so... Could you not have told me sooner? Uh, yes, I, yes, I could, but nothing was certain until recently. I was afraid, am afraid, that you might not love me when you knew. I, I wish to retain your affection as long as possible. It's kind and considerate. That is the first thing that I've made certain of. I am sorry that I leave you no choice in this matter, Edith, but it is too important an issue to be decided by your heart. I know, Father. If you will excuse me, I do not wish to feast tonight. With your permission, I will stay here. Very well. Good day, daughter. Father. Married. Married. My lady, what has happened? I am to be married. Oh. To the Duke of Senov. I have heard he is very kind, my lady. Yes, it would seem so. And noble. Yes. Leave me, Jane. My lady. I cannot dance tonight and I do not feel like eating. I have three days left of... Childhood is a sober thought. You will learn to love him. And not a fleeting passion, either. Yes, I expect I will. Leave me now, please, Jane. Please. Yes, my lady. An hour before dawn, just as the first frost of autumn was dusting white in the fields, a shape appeared, high in the sky, nearing. They had traveled far from out of the cold east, but they were not tired, for malignant power needs no rest. The moon was full, the thin cold light Etched vast wings, glittering, golden, claws like steel, cruelly hooked, a tail barbed, dipped in poison, teeth of red, a tongue of fire. <coughs> On his back, balanced tall and naked, gaunt faced, eyes hard was. <coughs> They circled once and then made sun. The witch had returned from the past, and fear settled cold in the hearts of men. Sir, you of Monrad, my liege. You sent for me, sire. Yes. Walk with me a while, Sir Hugh. Sire. You uh, are well? I am, sire. Yes. I hear Sir Edmund is not so. He will heal. Yes. I am glad that you are my champion. Thank you, sire. Look at these roses. They have lasted well, but already the frost begins to blight them. I am no gardener, sir. I uh, have something to ask of you, Sir you, Sir. Caven and Skrull have returned. I know that, sir. You saw them? I saw them. Skrull seems bigger than before. It was a challenge, Sir Hugh, directed at me when they flew over the castle. It was a challenge, Sir Hugh, that you must accept. I. You are my champion, and you know them from old. Sire. What is in your mind? I 
had hoped my fighting days were over, sire. If you destroy them, I will not be ungrateful. If I destroy them, sire, you know you send me to my death. Yes, do not think that I have not thought on this. I, I would not likely send you. This time, Sir Knight, we have no trial. When do you wish me to depart? Today. Today? Rumor is already growing. It must be seen that I act and fast. I would that I could send another. And others, I know, would gladly take your place. But you are the most fitting. Sir. I leave your route to you, and I grant you powers to parley as if you were me. But I will grant the witch no land or title or respect. I will not have sorcery in my realm again. Parley. I parley with nothing. You must see that I will have no truck with witches. Cleanse this land of her for me, Sir Hugh. I beg you. I have served you all my life, sire. And where you send me, I will go. I hope that we will have your courage when it is our turn to face her. May God go with you, Sir Knight. Sire. Caven. Caven and Skrull. God in heaven, it begins again. Do you mind, Jim? I wonder if the princess is on the battlements. Yes, there she is. Do not fear, my lady. We will chase the nasty witch and dragon away. Do you think she heard me? All others did. She's waving. And now she's gone. She waved to me, sir. She waved to me. The princess Edith waved to me. She could do little else. Sir Knight, when we have slain the dragon, do you think the king will knight me? Perhaps. Do you think he will grant me land? Ian. Knighthood, land. What honor I might not win. Ian. Sir Knight? You have little idea of what you say. Tell me, last night, did you see them when they flew over? Indeed not, sir. I must confess that I am not used to wine, Sir Knight. Mm, I did notice. Well, I have been drinking too, and hard. But when we heard the shouts outside and went to sea, I could have been drinking water. I was that afraid. Afraid, Sir Knight? Skrull measures 50 or more paces from wingtip to wingtip. His tail can flatten the house with one blow. His breath is so fierce that where he breathes, all is blackened and scorched to nothing. He's invulnerable to sword, club, lance or mace. There is no way to slay him. Then we must use his strength against himself. Win by stealth. Ian, he is not an adversary at a wrestling match. The dragon kills. He kills swift and gives no quarter. When he sees us, we will die. Even so. And uh... then there is the witch herself. Caven can change into any shape or form. She can make you see what is not there. She can bring down lightning from a clear sky. She could tie us fast with spells so that we are helpless. And like the dragon, she has no pity. Then how, Sir Knight, was she conquered before? She had a child. A child? The witch gave birth? Yes. 
It is not generally known. A country must have pride in her fighting men. So it was put about, she was defeated by strength of arms. But we were at her mercy. The country was hers for the taking. The dragon was roaming unchecked. She thought the child safe, but it was not so. The king gained custody of her. A girl child, a babe in arms, innocent. The king threatened to have her skewered with red-hot irons and then quartered. And so Caven left. She was then more mother than witch. So she left. Oh, this is not a pleasant tale. Hardly one of gallantry. There is no honor in it. What happened to the babe? She was returned to Caven. It was part of the bargain. I tell you this now, Ian, because I expect us to die. To be snuffed out like a candle when first we meet them. And it is fitting that you should know the truth. If, if things are as you say, then why has the king sent us? You heard them cheering. It gives hope and leaves him time to plan and marshal his forces. But now there is no child. He has no hold on her. Like me, he can see only death. If you wish, Ian, I will release you from your vows to me and you can go home. I would not think that you lacked courage. That would be small thanks for your concern, Sir Knight. I am bound to you by more than vows. I could not leave you even if you ordered me. Anyway, they must be growing old. Oh. We might catch them dozing by a fire, like an old woman and her kitten. Some kitten. And if they fight, their bones will creak with age. Mine creak too, do not forget. We'll dance rings round them, Sir Knight. Hey, my dancing days are over. Then I will dance, while you creep up and stab him in the rear. And blunt my sword, no matter what part I hit. <laughs> <laughs> no, lad. If we triumph, it will be because of unforeseen circumstances, not else. But your optimism gives me hope. Come, we must hasten. My lady, what are you about? Uh, nothing, nothing. A, a few clothes only to give to the poor. May I see? Uh, there is no need. I have finished. Your wardrobe is my concern, my lady. I tell you, there is nothing here. A, a few shifts, nothing more. Then I will have them washed and aired. A few shifts, my lady. These are boys' clothes. A pages. My lady, what are you planning? My lady, please, trust me. Well, then I must take the clothes to your father. No. My lady, I saw you watch Sir Hugh and his squire leave and saw you cry. I know you were fearful of your coming marriage, but, my lady, if you have planned what I think you have planned, then you are being very foolish. Oh, Jane. I love you like a mother. But what I have planned is, is very little. I intend only leaving the castle for a day and, and perhaps the night. The night? One night, one night only. A small adventure before I wed. I will take my mare and ride as if for sport. And then, once out of sight, I will become a boy with my hair under a cap. And then I will gallop like the wind. I will gallop south. South? Oh, not too far. Just enough to circle beyond the ruined convent of St. Agnes. And at the ruins, I will spend the night. I see. And tomorrow I will be back. No longer a boy. Back to await my betrothed. What could be more harmless? The convent ruins, my lady, lie directly on the route Sir Hugh will be taking. Oh, really? And he and his squire will doubtless spend the night there. I only wish to meet them, to join their talk. Oh, my lady. They are going to die, Jane. They go alone against the dragon. My father sends them as a sacrifice. Oh, even so... But to satisfy a childish whim... It is no whim, Jane. It is. No, I have planned it down to the smallest detail. Nothing can go wrong. Unless you betray me. It would not be betrayed. It would. I mean to go, Jane. You do not know the squire. If you knew him, if you had spoken with him, even of love and found it returned, I, I still would not agree. 
It is not right for you to do this thing. It is right. It is very right. Oh, Jane. Except with you. Have I behaved other than with discretion? Have I not obeyed my father's every wish? I am to marry soon. A man I do not know. I will spend my wedding night with a stranger and people will say it is right for me to do so. Oh, Jane, although I have never met Ian, I know him better than the Duke. Surely it is as right for me to talk with him innocently without his knowing who I am as it is for me to bed down with my husband? No, it is not. My lady, a princess cannot choose, cannot make comparisons. You know that as well as I. Not even once, Jane. Are the walls around me so very solid? They are, my lady. And you are a part of them. Well, I hate them and I hate you. My lady. I do, I hate you, Jane. <sighs> Child, I love you as if you were my own, but I must do my duty. <sighs> Well, will you promise me you will not go? No. Then I must take these clothes to your father. I will say you have invented it. He knows I have no reason to. He knows I love you. Jane! Oh, stay here. My lady? When you were young, did you not do such things? Well... And did any harm come from them? No. And will any harm come from this? If people find oh, out... No one will unless you tell them. It will be safe, Jane, as safe as if I had stayed here. You would not tell them who you are. Oh, no. You would not say you were not a boy. No. And the disguise would be my chaperone. Oh, but they might see it. It will be dark and firelight jumbled speeches, you see? I have worked it all out. Oh, say you will let me go, Jane. I know you will. And you will stay here. Say that tomorrow I may ride out early. No, I will not do that, my oh, lady. Jane. I will come with you. I could not let you go alone. You object. Oh, no, no, dear Jane, no. I cannot imagine you as a boy. I will go as I am and be your mother. My mother? And as for my safety, my age will see to that. <sighs> Now, we will need food and blankets. <laughs> oh, 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 we die, child. Oh, we have much to do. Oh, oh darling, Jane, oh. you are so practical. <laughs> and now, like a hawk, we must soar, winging high and fast. Beneath us rolls the countryside, unfolding emerald green. Thin brooks meander, fields sit square. Distance lends a toy-like peace. But as we gain height, arching up, a gentle, innocent stain of brown appears, heading south, the dragon's root, where all plants wither from its castle, a deadly road to the witch's castle. Turret room prepared yet? I think so, Mother. It must be done by night, for without the pentacle, I have no eyes. Oh, yes, Mother. Did you see the cat? Cat? Did you see him run? A stray, I think. But he felt my power and was frightened. A small black cat with white on his chest? Yes. You'll not see him again. I gave him some food this morning. He rubbed up against me and purred. You are soft, daughter. No fit child to me. I'm sorry, mother. And for you, I break my word. I did not ask you to. All this should rightly belong to you. None else. I do not like it here. Damn. Cold. Damn. Cold. If you would but use your powers, child, you could order it as you wished. I do not like these powers, mother. They give much for little effort. I gain small satisfaction from them. You will learn. Once I thought I could try to live a natural life, but men hate what has been done then. Like the cat, 
I could sense the difference, so they turned on me. You will turn. Hate breeds hate, and now I hate them back. It could not always have been so, Mother, for I exist. Did not my father love you? And you him? Love! Alas, that was all. I had no love for him. It was you I wanted. A daughter. Nothing else. Even I cannot create life without a man. <sighs> Let me see what you have done. A king will move fast, I know. Men already will be traveling here, and I must be prepared. But Skrull will frighten them away. Skrull is my affair, not yours. I'm sorry. The dragon grows in strength. It worries me. Uh -huh. Oh, he would do as I require. Doubt not that. Once I unleash him, he will waste this land to dust. But his control is not for unskilled hands. Stay clear of him, daughter, until you decide to use what lies within you. Is the area large enough, Mother? Have I cleared enough space? It will do. You may leave me now. Yes, Mother. If I think right, the King's men tonight will just be within the borders of my power, and I will stop them. You... You will slay them? Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> I will see how fancy takes me. Leave me now. Yes, Mother. More wine, Sir Knight? No, lad. And you'll not touch it either. Put more wood on the fire. Yes, sir. Will the witch know where we are, Sir Knight? She might. Depends if she looks. What do you mean? She can spread her power like a spider's web. Sense all that lies within. Oh. Think not on it. No. It goes dark. Aye. I begin to think the ruins change shape. It is the firelight. They say that when the witch is near, the air freezes. Aye. Even in summer or autumn, the air freezes. Ian. It is cold now. Do you think the witch... If she be near, Ian, you will know it. How? It gets dark and cold, but too dark to be natural, too cold to be normal. But... It is not that now. Grasp in your mind what you know is real and dwell on nothing else. Or you'll be like a cat that jumps at shadows. Yes, sir, Knight. <gasps> what now? It is nothing. Uh, <gasps> Ian? It is nothing. I thought I saw a rock move. Then walk over and sit on it. But do not think. <gasps> Someone nears. My shield. Two horses, I think. My shield and sword, boy. Yes, sir, Knight. You stand to my back. Watch for me there. In spite of the peace, there are still rogues about. <gasps> We come in peace, my lord. It is but a boy. Keep to your post. Stay there, boy, uh, and stay to business. As you wish, my lord. I am escorting my mother to the king's castle. We are but two, my lord. Where have you come from? Braxham, my lord. Braxham? My mother is tired with travel, and we both are cold. Come closer, both of you. Uh, yes, my lord. Come along, mother. Oh, let, let me help. be here. Don't look mine. They're unarmed. Yes. <laughs> Take their horses, Ian. Tether them with our own. Yes, Sir Knight. Sit down and join us. You're welcome. Welcome, my lord. Thank you. May I offer you food, wine? Uh, mother? Oh, a little wine. Uh, I am Sir Hugh of Monret. My squire is called Ian. You are... Oh, um, uh, my father was John Preen, sir, of Bracham. Was? Uh, well, he's been dead for some years. Ah, Madam. Oh, thank you, Sir Knight. And for you, uh... Edward, sir. Wine? Oh, uh, no, let me serve myself. Oh. It's not fitting that you should wait upon such a lad as I. Oh. Thank you. <sighs> How could I have suspected you rose when he's so well-mannered? Oh, she, he has been, well, well brought up, sir. Well, I can see that. Uh. Oh, take more, lad. You've hardly enough there to fill a thimble. The bottle is empty, Sir Knight. Oh. Here, another bottle. And help the lad to wine. Uh, yes, Sir Knight. Here, let me help you. Oh, <clears throat> oh, thank you. You have no man with you for protection? Uh, no, uh, we could um, not spare them, sir. The harvest is late this year. Ah, I see. Let us draw closer to the fire. <clears throat> you, uh, you have many men working for you, lady. Oh, uh, 
My mother has no head for figures. We have some land, sir, about um, nine hides. A steward assists us with the running. Nine hides, eh? Mm. Well, uh, um, about eight and a half, to be precise, I think. Even Isn't so. Uh, and there are more sons, daughters? I am an only child. Oh, yes, an only child. Hmm. Well, this is timely. New companions help pass the hours more swiftly. Uh, your land, lady, it, um, it's all good pasture. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, why not? Good. Good. Well, your health, widow. Your health. And your health, too, Sir Knight. May you live long. May we all live long, lady. Drink, all of you. Drink. <laughs> I feel the future drawing near. Alone in the pentacle, the witch sat, bat-like. Motionless, spinning strands of power, spider-like. Eyes closed, face tense, hands clenched, bird-like. Blackness gathers, pulsating dark, drumming, cold, breaking forth as she opened her green and slitted eyes. Her power spread, a slow black chill creeping over the land, knowing all, knowing. <laughs> oh, it is good to talk like this. Spin tails, even if one exaggerates a bit. More wine, Sir Knight. Oh, no, I'll need a clear head on the morrow, and you'll not have some either. He uh, composes poems when he's been drinking. Oh, oh sir. Poems? Love poems. <laughs> Love poems. They are very poor, and I cannot remember them. A oh. good thing, too. Romantic nonsense. Do you not think so, lady? Oh, well, for the young, perhaps it does no harm. But you and I are too old for that. It would seem so. The fire gets low. Ian, more wood. There's little here, sir. I must gather more. Oh, um, I will help you. Oh, but... oh let him go. Mother. They'll not be far. The moon is full. We will bring back armfuls, won't we, lad? Oh, yes, we will indeed. You seem pensive, mistress. Uh, I worry about my son. Ah, yes. Your son. I've been watching him closely. Oh. A delicate lad, is he not? But... Yes, very delicate. Small-handed, white-skinned, large-eyed. Hair, I think, uh, longer than he shows. Well, he, he has lived a, a sheltered life. Very sheltered by the look of him. My squire knows little of young women. He cannot see those subtle signs that tell them apart, particularly if they are disguised in the clothes of a boy. I am not my squire, however... Within five minutes of your arrival here, my eyes were open. It was for safety. Oh, I thought as much. I only wonder what other lies you've told is truth. Oh. But it does not matter, and I will not pry. Except in one thing. And what is that? You are unwed. Oh, yes, I am unwed. And unspoken for. That too. I will not ask of land. I would not wish to stretch my luck. I'd be glad that you do not, sir. You know, we go to fight the witch. Yes, you have said. Mm. <clears throat> uh, mistress, this is hard to say, for it presumes a lot. But if I return, the witch and the dragon will be dead, and I would wish to settle down. The king will reward me well, I know. I would not need land or dowry or... <clears throat> uh, mistress, if I return, may I call on you? You may, Sir Knight. You would be welcome. I will do my best to do so, then. Mm. Storm is gathering. Here, take my cloak until they return with the fuel. The wood is dry here. Ah. I think Sir Hugh has taken a fancy to your mother. Really? 
<coughs> I did not notice. You're fortunate. How so? Oh, come, lad. He is a champion knight. Foremost warrior in the land. He could have his pick of noble widows. Ah. And uh, you, could you have your pick of the daughters of those widows? I had not thought on it. But anyway, my heart is taken. Oh, who... <coughs> who by? You could not expect me to tell you that. Is she so very great, then? Among the greatest in the land. Oh. We'll need more wood than this, lad. Look over there. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. I have heard the King's Castle is very grand. Oh, it is. Very grand. And the people there are very clever. Some are. Some aren't. It depends on who you meet. You have met many. A few. Being squire to the champion knight does not allow much time. Tell me, did you meet the princess? Edith, I think she is called. In passing, a few words, nothing more. Oh, oh, <clears throat> where was that? You're very inquisitive. I am uh, going there. I, I wish to know how I should behave. Should I meet the princess? <laughs> and you, sir, are obviously used to meeting such great people. Are you playing with me, lad? No, sir, not I. They say the princess is quite presentable. Presentable? She is too beautiful to describe. Oh. Tell me, is she among the greatest in the land? Of course she is. A... <laughs> you are astute for one so young. <laughs> Tis the princess that you love. It is. Does she love you? I do not know. I would not let my fancy ride that high. When you spoke with her in passing, did you not tell her of your love? No, I did not. But you intend to when next you meet her in passing. It is possible. I shall see how I feel. Oh. Here, hold your arms out. Let me load you up. Certainly, sir. Tell me, if the princess were here now in front of you, would you tell her of your love? We must hurry. Oh, please, sir, tell me. All right. I would not. Why not? I would be afraid she would do no more than sport with me. And anyway, you know we go to fight the dragon and the witch. I do. It is not likely that we will return, and dreams are too precious to throw away. I would not have her use me as a plaything. I think you think her very cruel. Thoughtless, rather. And vain, perhaps. Imagine for a moment that you are the princess boy. Would you not have fun with me? I... Nothing. The storm gets close. Oh, it's so cold and dark. Clouds over the moon. Clouds, but there are no clouds. What? A boy. Two boys. No, a boy and a girl. The witch. Oh, no. A man and a girl. A girl. You. Much more than a simple girl. Much, much more. What have you done? A girl? Where is she? Ian! Ian! The knight! Over here! What has happened? Where the is witch the witch? was here! The witch! Oh. Hey, man! Even so, sir. Even so. What have you done with her? Where is Karen? Where is the boy? Boy? I know of no boy. Girl, then! In my, castle. my lady! Lady! She was high born! Highest! What? Cayman! Cayman! Behind you, the light! Cayman! Still behind you, the light! let the girl go! She is no concern of yours! No concern, sir, light! Ask my lord, the king! The king? Red hot irons! For his daughter, my red-hot irons will be the dragon's teeth. His daughter? Edith. Ask the woman. Ask the mother. And then come and fetch her. If you dare, come and fetch her from the dragon's mouth. <laughs> Mistress, does the witch say true? Oh, yes. She was my lady, the princess, Edith. The princess? But, Knight, what can we do? We cannot go back without her. We will rescue her. I will rescue her. Do not be foolish, Ian. But, Sir Knight... Put your sword away. But, Ian! Yes, Sir Knight. Now, go and see to the horses. Make sure they're well tethered. Yes, Sir Knight. Now, Mistress, 
Why did you come here? She is too worried. She wished... Oh, she had had little excitement. Oh, why did I let her? She twisted me round her finger like a ring. The king does not know that she came here. No. When he finds out, he will have your head for this. I would have no else. I would that I could exchange it for her safety. Oh, Sir Knight, we must get her back. Yes, we must. Though, I see nothing but to go on and hope. And I must come with you. No, you must not. Oh, but... Women have taken too great a hand in this affair already, madam. Three leagues from here, I know a family. They will care for you. It is on our road. We will leave you there tomorrow. But the matter... The matter is ended. Yes, Sir Knight. Mistress, what I said before when we were alone still holds. But for now, I must not think on you. And you must keep your place. Ian, were the horses undisturbed? They were, sir. Good. We will need them fresh tomorrow. We must travel fast. Yes, sir. And we will take your horse, too, mistress, when we leave you. We're leaving you? Oh, yes. Yes, you must. There is no place for me in this. Fighting is for fighting men, Ian. And when we face Caven and the dragon... <sighs> Caven! Caven, if I catch you clear of sorcery, I will slay you dead. Mother! Mother! What have you done? Done? The girl in boy's clothes, sleeping in the turret. No, girl, child. She is the princess, Edith. The princess? Last night she strayed too near. I reached out and took her. It was easy. What will you do with her? Use her. As once the king would have used you. She will be a poor. I will gain for you what I wish, and then... And then? That pawn will never be a queen. Skrull will make sure of that. Oh, do not do it, Mother. I beg you. You have no right to beg. I have every right. You do this in my name, as if for me. Yet I do not want it. You will turn all men against me if you continue. Oh, I cannot leave you, Mother, for I know you love me. But better I were dead than be like you. Daughter, you know nothing. I do, Mother. I know what is within me. Clear and still. An ache, a void, a need for love. You have mine. And more than yours, a different kind. Soon <sighs> I know I will need a man to love. Soon I know I will want a child. But I do not wish to have to do as you. I want to gain no man's love by sorcery. You touch me, daughter. But you are wrong. No, I am not. Oh, please. I plead with you. Give up this scheme. Release the girl. Let us leave. We can go away, find another land, and live once more in peace, even if alone. We cannot. Why not? It is not possible. It is. We could leave today, within the hour. No. Scrawl the nut and so. Scrawl? Yes. The dragon lies at the center of our being here. What? He would have the old days back. He knows not of love or peace. Skrull has the power, Marianne, more so than I. If we had not come here with him, he would have turned on us. So you aid him? I had no choice. My spells may have him mute and sleeping now. But when he wakes, Marianne, believe me, we have no choice but to ride upon his back. No choice. None. How much further to the witch's castle, Sir Knight? That's for the league now. Once we chop this hill, we should see it. I have been thinking, Sir Knight, about the princess. So have I. Damn the girl. She makes our task impossible. I was thinking why she came to the ruins. Why she would wish to meet us. Maybe she was taken with me, Sir Knight. Do not flatter yourself. She would have come had it been Sir Edmund and his squire that rode against the dragon. That I do not see. We are marked to die, Ian. Last night was our last on earth. She came to share it. That was kind of her then. Had she come as the princess, perhaps, it would have shown concern. But as a boy, it was romantic nonsense and cruel. She was using you, Ian. Using both of us to gain a brief and spiteful pleasure. On the surface, what you say is true, but... But that cannot be the whole of it. It makes her out a vulture. 
I prefer to think she was thoughtless, nothing else. Had not... Had not Caven taken her, we would have seen her true concern, I'm sure of it. You may be right. It does not matter. Only one thing stands clear now. We've got to get her back. That is our first consideration. How will we attack, Sir Knight? I do not know. I hope that she will let me prepare. Let me get my armor on. And ride properly into battle. I do not want to be crushed like an insect before I've drawn my sword. There's only one thing I know from the past. The witch likes drama. Set-piece battles. That would be fitting for champion knight, foremost warrior in the land. I... I have been thinking, sir. Let us suppose that the witch and the dragon ride forth for battle. The castle, then, would be undefended. Could I not circle behind and reach the princess unseen? Yeah, and you forget that she sees all. For the princess, there is no safety until the witch is dead, and the dragon, too. But surely, sir, my plan gives some hope. No more hope than mine, which gives none. Ian, I say again, fortune must take a hand in this affair, and soon, or else all has been lost since we began. Listen. Witch! Steady, steady. Oh, it's indifferent. That saucer, they all the same. Are you ready to defend yourself? Yes, Sir Knight. At first, the figure they saw was ghostly, pulsating red, uncertain. A girl! Hold your face. Then it condensed, became solid, real. A girl with softly flowing hair, gentle shape, sweet face, sad, sad eyes. She faints. Stay here. You think it is the witch? A witch for sure. Who are you, child? I am Marianne, Sir Knight. Marianne? Yes. My mother is Caven the witch. The witch? Your daughter. Caven's daughter? Yes, oh, please. Might I beg a little water? Oh, I do not often use my power, and it makes me weak. Water? Ah, here is water. Oh. Come, take it from my hand. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Sir Knight. Ah. <gasps> I have you now. One move, bitch, and I cut your head off. Sir Knight! Dismount here and put your dagger to her ribs. But, uh, Do it! But, sir... And if she move at once, strike home and deep. Yes, Sir Knight. She be what she says. We have something cave and treasures. We must not let her slip. <coughs> Hold her fast, Ian. I have, sir. And if she is not, she is still a witch and must die. Now, bring her here. Watch her close. Keep your dagger firm. Now, bitch, we may talk. Only no deceit, either by your tongue or witchcraft, or my squire will kill you. Now... What do you want with us? I come to offer aid to put my powers at your service. Do you? You hear that, Ian? The witch's daughter offers aid. Oh, not against my mother, sir, but against the dragon. My mother, I could not harm, but Skrull, I would have him destroyed. The dragon destroyed? That strikes at the witch. You're not consistent. Oh. So, tell the truth about your being here. Oh, it is as I say. My mother cannot control the dragon now. I would have him dead so that we may depart. Depart? Oh, yes. Well, why else should I come here? Why else should I place myself so easily in your power? It is not enough. There must be more. Oh, no more, Sir Knight, I swear it. Uh, oh, no more. I stake my life on it. Your life is forfeit anyway. Oh, oh please, may I have the water now? Here. Oh, thank you, sir. Stay close, Ian. I do not trust her yet. Mm. Uh, I will not flee. Even so, why would you help us? Why would you turn against your mother? Oh, Sir Knight, once you discovered my identity, you called me bitch. You would have slain me, would slay me now, except you think I might be useful. I do not like it so, this hate that men feel for me, although I do no harm. With your help, Sir Knight, I would show that I am human. Ian, do you believe her? I do, Sir Knight. Why? She is too beautiful to be false. Beautiful? Ian, beauty means nothing. When will you learn? I do not trust her. I dare not. It is too simple and convenient to be other than Caven's work. It is not so, sir. My mother... Will pay heavily for you. 
You will serve to get the princess back. How so, sir? We propose an exchange to Caven. Her daughter for the princess. And if she does not agree? Then we kill this bitch here. Sir Knight! My liege begged me to cleanse this land of sorcery, and we will make a start with her. But, sir... And you'll not gainsay me, Ian. Sir Knight, you read this badly. I read this badly. You throw away our only chance. Speak on. Things will be as they were before if we get the princess back. Not so. She will be safe. How long for? A day, perhaps? You said yourself, defeat Skrull and all else unravels. But that we cannot do unless we trust the maid, so that she can strike when least expected by the witch. Hmm. Her beauty makes you eloquent, Ian. And convincing. Sir, I see it clear the course we have to take. Perhaps. But I think not you would think the same if she were ugly. Beware, child. He falls in love with any pretty face. Tell me, what are the witch's plans? My mother. She would kill the princess out of spite. When? I do not know. Soon, I think. How? By waking the dragon and putting her in his path. The dragon sleeps? Yes, but... Then we have him. Not so. It is my mother who makes him slumber. It's an artificial sleep that he is in. If you get close, he will wake. Where does he rest? Beyond the castle. There is a valley. He lies there. Oh, Sir Knight, if you would put your trust in me, we must move this business swiftly. I must be back before my mother knows that I am gone. What would you have us do? I will tell you what no one knows about the dragon. Draw close and listen hard. It is her sorcery that keeps him safe. She coats his scales with power that turns aside all arms. Oh, Sir Knight, you could charge him fair and hit him hard, but you could not touch his skin, not while my mother provides the shield. But take away that defense and you can slay him like any animal. I did not know this. It is the secret of his invulnerability. The suggest is this, that you confront the dragon Throw all caution aside and charge. The dragon will be careless. So he will not touch him. So you betray me, Marianne. And give you... You betray me. Plot their death. And my daughter, she plots with them. With her help, they force my hand. I can no longer wait to put the king upon the rack. Blame them, child, for what is about to happen. And, and what is that? Your death. My father will give anything. Your and... father is not here. I wish he were. It, it is not fitting that I am guard like this. Bring me a gun, some women's clothes. You have spirit. <laughs> that is dignity enough. I think you jest with me to frighten me. You do not mean it. I mean it, child. Doubt it but not. But I am innocent. I have done nothing. You carry your father's love. That is guilt enough. The dragon will eat you, child. Eat you whole. Then he will destroy your friends. You will have company in death. Never fear. You're trying to humiliate me. I will not let you. I will not. I'm my father's daughter, the princess. I will not crawl to you. <laughs> I despise you. You use emotions as toys, not feelings. You think you are being noble now. You are not. There is no nobility in death. When you feel the dragon's breath, you will scream like that. <laughs> and that. 
fitting bait for the dragon in the night. When I have blessed you as I wish, I will have sport with him again. <laughs> Your hair is strong. A worthy rope to hang them with. And that is my plan, sir. What do you think of it? It has many gaps. I do not like it. You pit my skill against the dragon. You will succeed, Sir Knight. Your lance can pierce him now. If I get close, perhaps. But it is staking all on a single throw. You can do no more than you have said. I can open up a path for you through my mother's power so that you can reach the dragon. But my arts will stretch no further. And for this, you want the witch's life? If it should come to that. My oath on it. It would be enough, Sir Knight. An oath to break an oath. I must think on all of this. I'm not yet convinced that it is not a trap. It is no trap, sir. Stay here, both of you. Ian, if she should seem like leaving, kill her. Yes, sir. Do not take long, Sir Knight. I will not. I... I wish to thank you for your defense of me. It was nothing. Oh, you went against his authority and corrected him. Oh, that takes courage. No. He fires quickly. But he sees reason just as fast. I learnt that long since. Be that as it may, I thank you. Tell me, you said that I was beautiful. Did you mean it? Why, yes. Every word. You are very lovely, Marianne. You do not hate me. No. Why should I? Seeing who my mother is and what I am. It makes no difference. But Sir Hugh... Sees things in black and white, I think, and he is under stress. And so are you? Not so great. I do not carry the responsibility that is his. I have time to look at other things. Could... Could a man love me, do you think? Yes. Very deeply. Marianne? Yes? Can we speak of love again when this is over? I would like to, but it will not be possible. It must be possible. No. It must. Just say that you would not turn me aside. Sir Hugh returned. Say it, Marianne. You would not turn me aside? I would not turn you aside. I could not. I have considered. Your plan is the only one that gives us hope to finish this. I will trust you and spare the witch. Uh, we fight as you say. Good. Maid, you must return and fast. I will, Sir Knight. Ian, see to my armor. Yes, Sir Knight. <laughs> my mother is here. She watches. All is lost. <laughs> Even so, all is lost. Not so. Come here. Oh. Sir. Oh. We do as I first thought. Caven. Caven. Answer me, witch. Sir Hugh. Sir Hugh of Monrath. Caven, I have your daughter cold, my sword upon her neck. So I see, Sir Knight. Parley, witch, shall I strike? You think I value a daughter who would betray me? I know you value her, witch, from 15 years ago. So parley. What would you have of me? The princess. Nothing more. And your departure. Only that? And the dragon's death. Uh, say on, Sir Knight. Oh, there must be more. My head, perhaps, upon a block. I swear, witch, that if it were so, then I would gladly cut it off. You set a high price. Too high. Sever her neck, Sir Knight. I do not care. You care, witch. You care. You gave up all before. A thing I will not do again. So go on, Sir Knight. Why don't you strike? Curse you, witch. You push me too far. Mother, help me. He will not kill you, and he knows it. I will, and you can watch. Oh. You must not, sir. She leaves me no choice. I will not let you. Stand clear. No. I will cut through you to reach her, Ian, unless you move aside. Then cut, sir. For if she die, we all die with her. Be not too hasty, sir. Think on what you do. Kevin, my lowest price is the princess for your daughter. Ah, I thought it would come to that. Bring her here, Kevin. Bring the princess here. And if I do not? Then your daughter dies. You had better stop him, little squire, for I will not bring the princess here. She seeks to trick you, Ian. She will barter. Kevin, no more talk. Fetch her to us. Kevin? 
Answer me. I am thinking, Sir Knight, about the past. The past? Do you remember a woman, Sir Knight, in a small tavern? Do you remember a woman, Sir Knight, with flame red hair? What of it? Do you remember a night of love, of passion, 17 years ago? That is of no concern. You were a handsome man, Sir Hugh, and gentle. I often thought of it, your gentleness and your strengths. You are very virile, Sir Knight, very virile. You lie, witch. Lie? I lay with you, Sir Knight, with you. Watch! A woman appeared, tall, stately, red hair, deep belly, desirable. Standing, smiling on the grass, strong arms outstretched. This is how I came to you, Sir Knight. <laughs> and you did not flinch, not even when I scratched you to be uh, bled. <laughs> does she say true? She lies. I do not, Sir Knight, and you know it. <laughs> you lie, witch, you lie. Look. Upon this body. And then say you know me not. Which had I known who you were? You would have taken your pleasure still. Even so, it means nothing now. It is in the past and dead. I think not, Sir Knight. Nothing? The child you threaten. You call nothing? Child? Me? She is your daughter, Sir Knight. Your daughter as well as mine. Mother, is this true? It is true. You would not lie to me on this. I would not. I do not. There is no need. Sir Hugh, you have your daughter called. Your sword upon her neck. You had better strike. Strike hard and deep, for I make no bargains now. Mother, wait. You are safe, Marianne. He will not harm you now. Oh, no, do not leave me, Mother. We will meet again. When they are dead. The time approaches when I must wake the dragon. The dragon? Mother, do you want the dragon dead? Oh, Mother, do you want the dragon dead? You know I want him dead. But it cannot be. It can be, Mother, by force of arms. Sir Hugh. If you do not aid the dragon, Sir Hugh can slay him. And leave me almost helpless. You can leave, then. There will be nothing to keep us here. No. You swore you would not harm her, sir. Yes, but... Swear again. She'll agree. Caven, if the dragon dies, you can depart in peace. I swear it. Give me chance to kill him, Caven. Give me one chance. You would wish me only to stand aloof? Only that. Only that? Then I agree. I will take no part in it. You swear it? I swear it. On our daughter's life, I swear it. Good. Now... Sir Knight, what of the princess? I will not harm her. She's safe? For now. I will not touch her until this is over. Your word on it? My word on it. As ever... It comes down to naked strength and skill. Ian. Sir? Prepare my armor. I go to fight the dragon. Yes, sir, I... Kevin, does the dragon sleep? He sleeps, but light. If you approach within a hundred paces, the scroll will break. And I warn you, sir, he will be hungry. A hundred paces. I wish it were less. Marianne? Yes, father... Father, we are newly found. Yes, newly found. Will you forgive me for what I called you? I forgive you gladly. You will give me your blessing before I fight. I will. And, and will you look to Ian as a sister should, for he is like a son to me. I will look to him, Father. Your armor, sir. Then, prepare me. And my steed, for we must do this right. Skrull was deadly. Make no mistake on it. A monstrous beast of glittering gold with no compassion, no humanity. He was a killer, cold and clean, 
a murderous machine of death. Listen. He sleeps as yet, but soon he will awake and kill. Now you know why I've always said we were marked for death. You will kill him, sir. If I do not, then... Where stands the witch? She stands on that hill there, sir. Ah, she would watch this. I know, a set-piece confrontation. And Marianne, where is she? She stands with her, sir. Then give me my lance and go and join me. Uh, here, sir. Uh, and Ian. Sir? If you think the witch would interfere... Then take your sword and strike. You might not kill her, but perhaps it would distract her. Or if I do not kill the dragon, then do your best to slay the witch. I will, sir. And as for Marianne, I hope she does not come to harm. I wish that too, sir. Well, Ian, we have come far together. Aye, sir. My hand? Sir Hugh, may fortune favor you, sir. And you too, Ian. Leave me now. Yes, sir. Must begin. May God ride with us, beast. A hundred paces. A hundred only. And then we must move with lightning speed. Balanced finely in his saddle, his visor closed, his lance held level. Sir Hugh of Monreth. Champion knight, arrowed silver across the plain. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Words. They would have done the same to me. It is ironic, is it not, that the night should cause her death? Mother, did you plan this? You talked too much of leaving, child. I grew frightened. I would never have left you, Mother. But I must do so now. If the princess dies, then I do not wish to live. Marianne! Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye! Marianne! She was a shard of amber, splintering down. And the dragon saw her, turned his head, and spat out flame. Marianne! The witch, bat-like, hawk-like, black, swooped down and landed at the dragon's side. Scrawl! Scrawl! Stop! Stop! The dragon saw her. Scrawl! Lowered his head. Stop, Scrawl! And bit. The lance ran true. Ten feet of gleaming polished steel slid through his eye into his brain. Four years ago. I know your pain. 
she, she thought to love me, and she did. Too much, perhaps. I know that now. We have all learnt much from this. Yes. I thank you for what you did. In my name and my father's. I am to marry soon and will have my own court. I would be honoured to have you as my companion and my friend. Ask me again in a little while. For now, I, I cannot think. I will do that. For I need a friend like you. Here, Sir Knight, I have brought you wine. Ah, good. But first, take off this breastplate. Yes, Sir Knight. Ow! Oh, I swear I will fight no more dragons, boy. He must have thrown me clear by 50 feet. But I spit at him. I spit at him like a pig. It was a grand sight, Sir Knight. Land, Ian, land! I will get much from this. And honor, sir. Aye. And you will have your share. Yes, Sir Knight. Where is the princess? Oh, she is unharmed. She is almost within your means now, eh, lad? Even if she is, I will woo another. And who might that be? The witch's daughter? Your daughter too, sir. <laughs> I, I know, Ian. I was not forgetting. You talk of wooing. I know who I will woo and win. Sir? Her farm may be imaginary, but she has ample curves and a kindly nature. It'll be enough. Ian, Ian, this thing turns out well. It turns out well. Indeed it does, Sir Knight. Not even old age can fright me now, after this. Nor death, too. For Skrull was death. And I killed him, boy. I killed him clean. In our story, the dragon died and did not live again. But our story was set in the imagination. And in our fancy, dragons can always exist. Listen. You can hear them. And hear them forever. Their wing beats echoing across the sky. Casting dark shadows in a moonless night. The Tale of the Knight, the Witch, and the Dragon. The Knight, Sir Hugh of Monreth, was played by Patrick Stewart. The Witch, Caven, by Peggy Page. And the Dragon was created by Peter Howell of the Radiophonic Workshop, who also composed the sound score. The King was played by Anthony Newlands. The Princess Edith, by Elizabeth Proud. Sir Edmund, by Gavin Campbell. And the Herald was Henry Knowles. Ian, Sir Hugh's page, was played by Marcus Campbell, Jane, the Princess's Gentlewoman, by Sheila Grant, and Marianne, the Witcher's Daughter, by Kate Binchy. The King's subjects included Kenneth Shanley and Jonathan Scott, and Scrimp, the Storyteller, was played by Timothy Bateson. The studio managers were David Greenwood, Peter Novis, and Lloyd Silverthorne. The tale of The Knight, the Witch and the Dragon was written by J.C.W. Brooke and directed by Ian Cotterill. Yeah.